Thank you, Ben. Well, when I uh, first got here in 1996, uh, I could see that Dr. McKaylee already had this whole sort of thing on the roll that you're seeing today. And it was, it's been my pleasure since that time to really watch the development and help develop it. And it's been a great honor of mine to be part of that. Um, our sports medicine team model is really to look at the athlete, as you're going to hear, you've heard many times this morning, and you're going to hear it many times through the day, is to deal with the athlete both in terms of prevention, treatment, uh, diagnosis, and with the, uh, with the rehabilitation part of it. And so if you take a look at the numbers of uh, clinicians that have been involved with our practice uh, that have just developed over the numbers of years, uh, a number of these before I got there, but particularly over the past 15 years when a lot of this has really uh, taken effect, we've got an excellent nutritionist on staff that uh, works with uh, all aspects of the management of the athlete. Um, two excellent podiatrists. We've got a psychologist, and actually we're working on that now. The psychology demands for our practice has really grown quite significantly uh, with concussions, with uh, eating disorders, and just with the uh, management of taking care of your multiple recurrent injuries, such as recurrent ACL tears and that kind of thing. Um, and so we're actively in the process of hiring someone else uh, at this point in time. Of course, physical therapy has always been an ex extremely strong point of uh, working with us in the clinic and in close contact in, in, in most of the facilities that we're working in. Um, we have five athletic trainers, and that number is actually incorrect because there's a number of brand new hirees at the uh, McKaylee Center that add several more onto that. Um, two excellent nurses that help us with our uh, ultrasound uh, injections with our concussion clinic that have uh, done tremendous work. Um, seven uh, orthopedic surgeons that are facile at every aspect of uh, sports medicine interventions. Uh, Twelve primary care sports medicine physicians uh, with multiple areas of, of interest. We have uh, interest in skating, dance, uh, gymnastics, uh, throwing, uh, football, hockey, uh, you name it. And there's, uh, there's a, a primary care sports medicine physician uh, with a strong interest in, in that. Um, as well as the uh, orthopedic surgeons with specialty interest in, in, in different uh, uh, sports. And then we've sort of developed these uh, areas of, of sort of subspecialization. Um, so we've got the concussion clinic that Bill talked about before that we all work with. Uh, we've got a dance medicine clinic uh, dealing with professional dancers of the Boston Ballet, dealing with multiple intermediate and uh, just uh, novice uh, dancers. Um, We've got the Injured Runners Clinic that Bill talked about, and if you're around later this afternoon, we're going to go into a number of details on that. Uh, we've got the Female Athlete Clinic with um, a primary care sports medicine physician, nutritionist, uh, uh, orthopedic surgeon, all interested in the uh, dynamics of injuries that can occur with the, uh, with the female athlete. And that's been a very new and exciting thing that's uh, come along. We have a sports endocrinologist that helps work with that, Dr. Kate Ackerman. Um, there's the ultrasound clinic that started in 2008, and it has become extremely uh, useful. Um, there's a lot of dynamic imaging that can be done uh, of hip impingement, of uh, different ligamentous and tendon abnormalities and instabilities around the uh, elbow uh, and entire upper extremity into the wrist. Uh, a newer area that we're looking strongly at and we're, we're getting ready to look at publishing on is uh, hip impingement, looking at all of the periarticular hip impingements that occur outside the hip um, that is, is extremely interesting. And also in the ultrasound clinic, we're doing some uh, novel things with PRP and other types of in injection therapies for um, regenerative medicine, if, if you will. Um, there's a hip team where uh, there's a lot of uh, kids from all over New England that come in and all over the world for that matter with different types of hip problems and sometimes it's uh, a fairly simple problem but lots of times it's, it's related to different bony abnormalities about the hip such as hip dysplasia and it's really key to get in and evaluate all of those aspects of, 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 of the care. So that's been um, a, a very interesting uh, development. And then the newest addition, and I think is one of the strongest, and I think you're going to hear all day long, is, is the McKaylee Center. And the biomechanist um, who uh, is working with us, uh, as I think that this is going to interplay with all levels of care in which you, which you deal with the athlete. I don't think it's just injury prevention, and I'll, I'll just go through that in just a moment. So if you take a look at the four areas for prevention, of course, there's the standard pre-participation evaluation where we look at uh, different cardiac risk factors and we've got some research that's going on with uh, John Corrado uh, looking at uh, 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 
uh, using ultrasound to just measure wall, uh, left ventricular wall thickness um, in uh, association with getting an EKG as well. And in some centers, we're actually doing that at this point in time. Uh, we've got the uh, concussion assessments that uh, Bill has talked about that's very helpful in assessing the, uh, the athlete with impact tests, with uh, balance scores, and uh, a number of other things that are actually being looked at at this point. Female athlete screening, extremely important, both from a, uh, a physiologic standpoint as well as from a musculoskeletal risk factors for ACL injuries, and then just general fitness, obesity, and then there's a number of other uh, uh, things that go into that as well. Uh, Jan uh, goes down to the Boston Ballet and does a lot of uh, nutritional assessments uh, on a lot of the ballet dancers at the beginning of the year to sort of help um, minimize those kinds of risk uh, problems. Um, and then, of course, the, uh, the, the Center for, uh, the, the McKaylee Center for um, the Prevention of Musculoskeletal and, and uh, Medical Injuries in the Athlete. And that's, you're going to hear from everyone else, so I won't go into any more detail than that. However, um, I will sort of bring that up, though, in terms of utilization of those services at the McKaylee Center for multiple things along the course. But it, over, since April, since we've opened this up, it's become clear to me that as a clinician, I can use those services multiple times. So if I have a, an athlete that comes in that's injured from running, and running, by the way, includes more than cross country. It can be track. It can be, I mean, it can be uh, soccer. It can be lacrosse, other things that involve running. And you may be looking for that as part of your diagnosis. Why does that patellofemoral pain not go away? And if you, and like yesterday, uh, Friday afternoon, I ran down to the center with an athlete, did a little video analysis, and was able to show some of the things that were um, uh, giving a strong impact for that patellofemoral uh, instability. Um, so uh, even from the uh, diagnosis and treatment standpoint, that service is, is certainly uh, very well utilized. Um, from the rehabilitation and return to play, certainly as they go through their whole physical therapy component of things, and uh, uh, that's important. But then you've really got to look at the biomechanics of what got the athlete there and how to prevent that from recurring. And so certainly in the running clinic, we see a lot of that and do a lot of evaluation and restructuring of how, they, how their foot hits the ground, looking at overstride, heel strike, looking at the biomechanics of the lower extremity foot, uh, et cetera. Um, so I think that's a sort of a short overview of the multidisciplinary approach to the athlete to, so that we can look at all aspe aspects of care. And uh, that's a picture of my 95-year-old dad with his next-door neighbor. I think, I think he's making an exercise fashion statement, but... <laughs>